Science! Welcome to Science and part one of our four part mini series on the science of humanity in space. The idea of space travel and traveling through the cosmos has sparked the imagination of humanity for centuries. And early science fiction actually depicted this with absolutely no repercussions. The hero could just as easily live and breathe on Earth as they could in space or on another planet. This changed in the late 19th century, and science fiction embraced a more realistic depiction of space travel. The earliest examples of the space suit in fiction are Edison's Conquest of Mars in 1898, and also the popular comic book series Buck Rogers in the 1930s. But a space suit is so much more than just the clothes an astronaut wears in space. It is basically a one-person spaceship designed to keep the wearer safe, comfortable, and alive in the vacuum of space. The spacesuit has gone through a lot of changes over the years as science and technology have improved, and we are on the cusp of a brand new era of space exploration which will usher in new and improved spacesuits once again. NASA has a long history with spacesuits that started with pressure suits needed for pilots in high altitude aircraft. The first attempts were not that great, and the US military finally developed what was called the Henry suit in 1946, deemed the S-1 suit by the Air Force. This was a partial pressure suit. Partial pressure suits are skin tight and meant to put pressure directly on the body in case of decompression at dangerously high altitudes. Full pressure suits are basically a loose fitting bag shaped like a human with rings at the wrists and neck to attach the gloves and helmet. When space exploration was nearing the point it would become a reality, NASA needed to redesign the full pressure suits to astronaut suits called EVAs. In fact, there are technically three types of spacesuits, the EVA, or extravehicular activity, the IVA, or intravehicular activity, and a combination of both called the IEVA. To be considered a spacesuit, many requirements have to be met to ensure the utmost safety and usability. The most important is a stable internal pressure. This can actually be considerably less than the pressure here on Earth because there is no need to account for nitrogen, which makes up 78% of the atmosphere but is not used by the body. Lower pressure allows for greater mobility but increases the risk of decompression sickness. The other main requirements of a spacesuit include mobility, oxygen supply, temperature regulation, communication systems, and solid and liquid body waste collection systems. So I'm gonna be predominantly talking about the EVA suit, or specifically the EMU, the extravehicular mobility unit suit, the big white bulky suit that we all know. And uh, some of the science that goes into allowing humans to actually live and work outside of a spacecraft or a space station. Let's break down some of these requirements. First of all, oxygen supply. This is definitely the biggest no-brainer, but some science definitely had a hand in creating the best way to keep astronauts with enough air to breathe. Spacesuits get the oxygen either from a spacecraft via an umbilical cord like back in the day or from a backpack life support system that the astronaut wears. Also, the astronaut breathes out carbon dioxide, and this needs to be removed from the suit's atmosphere. Most spacesuits are equipped with lithium hydroxide canisters, which can be found in the life support backpack or on the station if the suit is connected via the umbilical cord. The backpack is the PLSS, or the Primary Life Support Subsystem. It contains many of the things that astronauts need to survive in space. As you can see in the diagram, it contains the primary O2 tanks and regulators, and also the H2O tanks for the water cooling system. It has its own battery, its fan, its motor assembly, and its antenna and extravehicular communications and caution and warning systems. The layers of the spacesuit are extremely important to help with temperature regulation and protection against micrometeoroids and solar flares. Spacesuits are made up of many layers. The spacesuit arm itself has over 14 layers of material to protect the spacewalker. The liquid cooling and ventilation garment makes up the first three layers. On top of this is the bladder layer. It creates the proper pressure for the body, and it also holds in the oxygen for breathing. The next layer holds the bladder layer to the correct shape around the astronaut's body and is made of the same material as camping tents. 
The ripstop liner is the tear resistant layer. And then the next seven layers are mylar insulation and make the suit act like a thermos. The layers keep the temperature from changing inside and they also protect the spacewalker from being harmed by small, high-speed objects flying through space. The outer layer is made of a blend of three fabrics. One is waterproof, another is used to make bulletproof vests, and the third is fire resistant. One of the most frequent questions astronauts get is how do they go to the bathroom in space? Well, in an EVA spacesuit, astronauts wear a mag or a maximum absorption garment, which is basically a large adult diaper. The communication system is twofold. The communications carrier assembly is also known as a Snoopy cap and houses the headphones and mic for the astronaut to remain in contact. The display and control module is mounted on the front of the spacesuit and allows the astronaut to communicate with the suit itself and control the PLSS. The EVA spacesuits also include a wrist-mounted checklist and mirror to aid with mobility and visibility. Mobility is the biggest thing that has plagued the spacesuits since their early days. You need to minimize the effort required to bend the limbs, resisting a soft pressure's garment's natural tendency to stiffen against the vacuum. Moving within an inflated spacesuit is very tough. Imagine trying to move your fingers in a rubber glove blown up with air. It doesn't really give very much. To help this problem, spacesuits are equipped with special joints or tapers in the fabric to help the astronauts bend their hands, arms, legs, knees, and ankles. But most spacesuits, both the EVAs and the IVAs, including the advanced crew escape suit, are sized poorly with some interchangeable parts, longer or shorter arm or leg parts, which do not help with the comfort or mobility of the astronaut. In fact, there have been multiple instances of joint pain, back pain, and even fingertip problems from astronauts having to live and work in these suits that are not entirely fit to their frames. This is all about to change with the brand new designs of the Artemis program and the Artemis spacesuits. But before we get into that, let's look back at some of the most notable spacesuits throughout history that led to this point. The SK-1 was the suit developed for Yuri Gargan, the first man in space. After his successful launch in 1961 on the Vostok 1, the suit was used for the next three years in the Russian space program. There was even an SK-2 suit developed for women, and the first woman in space wore one in 1963, Valentina Tereshkova on Vostok 6. And a fun fact, Valentina is also the only woman ever to have a solo flight in space. The Burkut was developed for extravehicular activity and was worn by Alexei Lenov during the first ever spacewalk. The current Russian spacesuits are the Sokol spacesuit, introduced in 1973, and much like the U.S. Advanced Crew Escape Suit. Also, the Orlan MK spacesuit, developed in 1977 and still used today as the standard EMU. The Mercury spacesuit was the first of its kind for the Americans in the space race and was basically a slight redesign of the Navy flight suits worn by test pilots. The Gemini program made three versions of the spacesuit, and Ed White wore one of the EVA versions during the first spacewalk from an American astronaut in 1965. The Apollo Skylab A7L EVA suits are the most iconic, as they were the spacesuits worn by the astronauts on the moon. These suits featured the backpack PLSS system and also boots with tread to accommodate walking on the moon's surface. All of these amazing advancements in what astronauts wear in space to keep them safe has finally led to today as we look again at visiting the moon with an eye on making it to Mars. NASA has unveiled the new design of the IVA and EVA. First up is the Orion spacesuit or the Orion crew survival system replacing the advanced crew escape suit. It is designed for a custom fit and equipped with safety technology and mobility features to help protect astronauts on launch day, in emergency situations, high-risk parts of missions near the moon, and during their high-speed return to Earth. The Orion suit has been enhanced from head to toe with improvements to the suit worn on shuttle missions. Starting at the top, a number of features on the helmet allow for improved comfort and function. The helmet is lighter, stronger, and comes in more than one size 
helping to reduce noise and is easier to connect to the communication system needed to talk to other crew members and mission control. While shuttle era spacesuits came in off the shelf sizes like small, medium, and large, the Orion suits will be custom fit for each crew member and accommodate astronauts of all sizes. The suit's gloves, the part of the spacesuit that receives the most wear and tear, are more durable and touch screen compatible, and improvements to the boots provide protection in case of fire, fit better, and help an astronaut move more nimbly. Even though it's primarily designed for launch and re-entry, the Orion suit can keep astronauts alive if Orion were to lose cabin pressure during the journey out to the moon, or while adjusting orbits in Gateway, or on the way back home. Astronauts could potentially survive inside the suit for up to six days as they make their way back to Earth. The XEMU, or Exploration Extravehicular Mobility Unit, will allow astronauts to maneuver and accomplish much more thanks to technological advancements that have been made since the Apollo missions. Until Apollo 11, the greatest concern with the lunar soil was that it wouldn't support the weight of a lander or the astronauts inside. Now we know that the greater danger is that the soil is composed of tiny glass-like shards, so the new suit has a suite of dust-tolerant features to prevent inhalation or contamination of the suit's life support system or other spacecraft. The familiar backpack PLSS or portable life support system has been upgraded and miniaturization of electronics and plumbing systems inside have made it possible to build in duplicates for much of the system, making some failures less of a concern. The duplication also increases safety and could increase spacewalk durations. The new lower torso includes advanced materials and joint bearings that allow bending and rotating at the hips, increased bending at the knees, and hiking style boots with flexible soles. On the upper torso, in addition to the updated shoulder placement, other shoulder enhancements allow astronauts to move their arms more freely and easily lift objects over their heads or reach across their body in the pressurized suit. Inside the helmet, NASA has redesigned the communication system. The headsets, or Snoopy caps, on the suits in use today can become sweaty and uncomfortable inside the helmet, and the microphone doesn't always track well with the astronauts' movements. The new audio system includes multiple embedded voice-activated microphones inside the upper torso that automatically pick up the astronaut's voice when they speak to their fellow spacewalker, their crewmates aboard the Gateway, or Mission Control in Houston. A new feature on the improved suit design is the rear entry hatch. Astronauts will be able to climb into a spacesuit from the back of the suit, which allows the shoulder elements of the upper hard torso to be closer together than the suits currently in use. The improved shoulder placement increases mobility and enables a better fit while also reducing the risk of shoulder injuries. In the Anthropometry and Biomechanics facility at NASA's Johnson Space Center, astronauts will undergo full-body 3D scans while performing basic motions and postures expected during spacewalks. With a complete 3D animated model, NASA can then match the astronaut to the module spacesuit components that will provide the most comfort and the broadest range of motion. Before the first woman and the next man take a step on the lunar south pole in 2024, NASA will test the new suits and several of its components on the International Space Station in a spaceflight environment to confirm the overall performance. And these are not the only new technologies being implemented into spacesuits. SpaceX, Boeing, and more are developing new spacesuits with the latest in technology to aid the astronauts in comfort, mobility, and safety. Astronauts wear their own personal spacecraft that has been developed through years of humanity living and working in space, and as technology continues to advance, so does the spacesuit. Next week, I will be discussing the science of spacewalks and how astronauts use their personal spacecraft to the fullest as they float miles above the Earth in space. Mm -hmm.